Right, our next speaker will be talking about QE MU, and it is my esteemed colleague from Western Digital, engineer Alistair Francis. Hey, can you hear me? <clears throat> okay, so I'm here to talk about um, RISC V development with QMU. So, what is QMU? Uh, it's been talked about a bit today, um, but in case anyone doesn't know, QMU is an open source emulator. <laughs> So it's not cycle accurate, it's not like a simulator, it's not like Spike or System C, it's an emulator. So it is functionally accurate. Uh, it can use this to be extremely quick. QMU is normally pretty much quicker than everything but an ASIC. So it's quicker than soft cores and um, simulators and everything else like that. So it uses TCG, which I'll talk about on the next slide, the tiny code generator, to convert host or guest instructions into host instructions. Um, so it has two modes, the soft MMU mode, and so this allows you to run, say, your full, your full stack, so your bootloader, your firmware, your operating system, and your user space all on top of that. But it also has Linux user mode support, which allows you to just run a Linux application for a different architecture on your, your current architecture, um, using the, uses your standard Linux kernel calls. Um, and I'll show that as well in one of my demos. So it works similar to GCC and compilers in that it has host and like target support and guest support. So RISC-V is supported in both, so it allows you, as Palmer showed a little earlier, to run either on RISC-V or run RISC-V on something else. Oh, and it's free. It's, you don't have to license it from anyone. It's free, it's open source. If you want to add a instruction, custom instruction you have, or extensions, you're welcome to do that. You can edit it as you want. So TCG began as a backend for a C compiler. Um, so basically what it does is it converts host uh, instructions into TCG ops, which then go to host instructions. Um, and you'll see this later in one of the demos as well. So it generates blocks of code. And these blocks, they do have a maximum size, but normally your block will end with a jump or a ret or certain CSR changes in RISC-V, so say enabling the MMU or something. They'll end your block. Um, so these, there is a mode called single step mode, um, which is sometimes useful, where each guest instruction will be a single block. So this comes with the performance decrease that allows you to see every exact instruction as it runs. Um, so TCG caches these instructions. So it takes a little while the first time to generate them, but after that it will cache them. And this is how QMU can be so quick. Uh, so fast path, for example, memory accesses will go through the MMU or the soft MMU once, and then after that QMU can just look up directly where it is. So I'm not going to read out all the hosts, but TCG supports a, lo a large range of hosts, including RISC V, and an even larger range of, range of guests, and in also including RISC V. Both um, we'll talk about. So what do we have in mainline? So don't use a fork. There used to be QMU forks everywhere because everyone was trying to upstream it, but it's all in mainline today. Um, it's been in mainline for long enough now that basically any distro should hopefully be able to install QMU for RISC-V and it should just work. But ideally try and, I mean, the newer the better. So today in mainline we have support for 32-bit and 64-bit RISC-V operating systems and RISC-V use Linux user space applications on any supported QMU platform. So you can run this on your x86 machine, on your ARM machines, on MIPS, whatever you have, RISC-V will run on top of that. So it also supports, the other way around, running any 32-bit or x86, 32-bit or 64-bit applications or operating systems on a 64-bit RISC-V. And so Palmer had a picture earlier today of, what, of that running. Um, so it doesn't work on 32-bit yet, mostly because of the, the lack of upstream GLFC, but that should work after that. So QMU has four major machines for RISC-V, the virt machine, the virtual machine, which is similar to the ARM virt machine, if anyone's used QMU for ARM. It's a, not a real hardware machine, it's a, uh, kind of a QMU one where it'll, it'll generate a device tree for you. Um, that's probably the most supported. But it has the HiFive Unleash, the HiFive One, and Spike machines in there as well, if, if anyone's interested in those. And ISA extensions, can be, once a, the next pull request is merged, can be enabled or disabled from the command line. So you can turn features on or off as you want to test them and things like that. And I'll go through that in my demo as well. 
So to get started, um, my talk's not really about getting started. It's kind of assumed you've done that and then some extra features on top of that. But if you want help getting started, the best place is to look at the distros. Every distro basically documents how to use it. So Fedora, Debian, BuildRoot, and Open Embedded all have great guides in their wikis or, or in their documentation somewhere on how to run QMU. Um, OpenSBI has a lot of documentation on running OpenSBI and payloads after that on QMU. And the QMU wiki has a page on RISC-V as well. So do we, I don't know if we want to do questions before the demos or just wait till the end, if anyone has anything. Does it support the draft hypervisor mode? Yes, uh, that's my demo. <laughs> yeah, so I'll show that. The, oh, the question was, does it support the draft hypervisor mode? And yeah, that's all I'll show. So, um, QMU, one of the useful things about QMU is the, the debugging options it gives you. So, especially if for something like a bootloader, if it's not booting, if you don't get to, if your kernel crashes before your serial comes up, stuff like that, QMU is really useful. So, I'll show you. Can everyone see that? Is that big enough? And no one said no, so I'll go with that. <laughs> okay, so this is QMU. Um, that's just QMU. We're running the vert machine. Oh, that's cool. Um, and we're just running OpenSBI. So OpenSBI runs. Um, we're going to pretend it's hanging. It's not hanging. It just is jumping to the next payload, and we don't have a payload. But let's pretend you're running a bootloader and it hangs, and you don't know why. Uh, and let's also pretend that you don't have serial output. You don't have your, your UART's not up yet, so you can't even print where it's hanging, and you have no idea what's going on. So how do you debug it? So you can use GDB, which I'll talk about next, but you can also use QMU's debug, uh, debug options. So if you type dash little d and then help, it prints a lot of different log options you can see. So I'm not going to go through all of these, but the, the really useful one is in ASM. So that's the guest assembly that QMU is running. And then the dash dig, big D just points it to a log file, so we'll log it. So now we can look at our log file. Oh, that looks kind of, there we go. So QMU starts at, at address 1000, and it runs its own bootloader it has, which just runs, as you can see, five instructions. Oh, so these are the TB, the translation blocks. Each one ends with a, either a CSR or a jump. And so then we're here, the 80000 is the start of OpenSBI. So we can see OpenSBI running, and we can see the instructions that OpenSBI is running. And this is a bigger block. And so we keep going down, we can follow its path, and QMU will actually, if you have debug symbols enabled, when you get to your C code, will tell you what function you're in. So we hit SBI init, we hit SBI current heart ID, and we keep going. So we want to see where it's hanging and what's going on. So let's jump to the bottom. Okay, so let's go up and look, look where we are. We're in SBI illegal instruction handler. That seems strange. So we keep going up. Yeah. So we can see SBI heart switch mode. That's one of the last things open SBI does before it, it jumps to the next, the next payload. Here we can see an MRET instruction, and we jump to 8020000. That's the, the address OpenSBI will jump to in 64-bit. And we can see there's nothing there. It's just zero, which is an illegal instruction. So we now know that OpenSBI is actually running. It's jumping to the next thing. It's, there's nothing there. And it's a legal instruction, which triggers then the illegal instruction handler. So we didn't have to put printfs in. We didn't have to go through all this with GDB. We can quickly just look at what's going on and see where QMU is getting to and go from there. And so like I mentioned before, with the single step, if you run dash single step, every TV will just be a single instruction like these. Uh, none of them will group together. So any questions on that before I move on to GDB debugging? So let's say, let's say it didn't work and you couldn't figure it out. or you know, It's more complex than that. So you can run the same arguments with dash s and dash s. So dash little s is open the GDB port. 
Uh, it's shorthand for a much longer command, but it just opens a GDB port at, at port 1234. So dash big S is stop. So it Kimu starts in the stop state. So no code will run. It just waits for you to hit continue. So as you can see, nothing runs. So now we can start the risk 5 GDB. Was oh, this one big enough? Yeah. Load the file. So we have our file symbols. Target the thing. And now we can run info threads. And we can see, we only have one thread, we're only running one core. So we can see the core, there's a CPU core. We can see what address it's at. And now we can do breakpoints. Oh. Yeah, so we can do breakpoints. We just hit the SBI init. So you can see this is the assembly, uh, the registers. You can't see, but it, it does say what register each register is. My color scheme is just kind of confusing here. Um, obviously, if you have source, depending on your, your stripping options, we have the actual code and we have where we are. So we can single step through everything now. Um, you can see up here, we're single stepping through our program. We can do watch points. Oh, I single stepped too far. Now we can do watch points and then continue. And you see here, we just hit a watch point. So our value changed. So you can do all your normal standard GDB debugging um, from what would be equivalent to JTAG debugging in hardware. So you don't need support. You, can debug, you don't need operating system support or anything. You can debug bare metal. You can debug Linux. You can, you can debug anything you want. Any questions on that one? Uh, do we want to? So I'm just trying to figure out. Your, so you're going uh, you, at a higher level. You're using Kimu, and then once you know approximately where the error is, you're switching into GDB. Is that right? No. So Kimu. I'm just starting Kimu, um, and then connecting the GDB, and then continuing and controlling the program execution from GDB. Why did you go to GDB? So I can so I want to break in, um, I want to put a breakpoint in the main function or something, right? The breakpoint. Yep. You can't set a breakpoint in Kimu. No, it can't debug okay. itself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So GDB has all the power. So. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, oh, so I'm running out of time. So someone asked about the hypervisor extension. Uh, so this is the. I won't go through the whole command line, but you can do dash CPU and see here we pick the priv spec version, we pick the user spec version, and we see H equals true. So we're enabling the hypervisor extension. Um, and we have dash SMP4, so that will enable four, four CPU cores. Um, and you can change that option as you want. Um, so this is the RIS-5 hypervisor then, as you can see, we brought up four CPU cores. And it loads all its files. And so we can kick the guest. And start Linux inside our hypervisor. Oh, now it doesn't start. You can come see the demo at lunch. I'm out of time, so. Um, the last thing I wanted to do is we can actually run, so this is LS, and then this is BusyBox. So you can see, yeah. it's a RISC-V executable. So if we try and, oh, uh, here. If we try and run it, we get an exec format error but then we can run the same thing with QME user mode. So, yeah. so this is QME dash L just specifies your root of S because I didn't build it statically, and then LS, and we're running the RISC-V LS command on our Linux host machine and looking at our Linux files.
and we can run GNU chess as well. So yeah, that's amount of time. So um, does anyone have any questions? Oh, and come look at the RISC V demo, hypervisor demo at our booth. It's worked every other time. Of course, it doesn't work now. <laughs> All right, thanks, Alistair. Okay, is Frank here? Frank, 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 no? So I just wanted to give a round of applause to ETH Zurich, the ETH Zurich team. You guys have been wonderful in terms of hosting us. So everybody, please give them a round of applause.